Bienvenidas to Latina Literati. If you enjoy amazing places, wonderful books, and interesting people, then this is the channel for you. San Juan Capistrano. This is a swallow in Spanish, golondrina. And golondrina is a very romantic thing to say to someone. Mi bella golondrina, amorcito golondrina. Uh, you wouldn't say it in English. Oh, my pretty swallow. <laughs> and one of the reasons why uh, golondrinas are so romantic in our literature and in our history is because they always return. So on the Dia de San Jose, on the Dia of San Jose, which is March 19th, the swallows return to San Juan Capistrano. And they return from a place called Goya, Argentina, 6,000 miles away. And in October, they will swarm and they will go back to winter in Argentina because it's the summer there, because it's in the Southern Hemisphere. <laughs> but I wanted to share with you today one of the most beautiful poems uh, in the Spanish language. It's by a poet named Adolfo Gustavo Becker. And he's considered one of the giants. He's right up there with Miguel de Cervantes in terms of poetry in the Spanish language. And he has a poem about golondrinas, which I thought I would share with you. It's not very long, so I ask for your patience, but I hope you'll enjoy it. In the description box, I'll include a translation, but poetry is really meant to be enjoyed in the language in which it's written. It's really hard to translate the breadth and depth and nuance of words uh, when you're trying to express some amazing, beautiful, some incredible and beautiful concepts. So I hope you'll enjoy it. Volverán las oscuras golondrinas a tus balcones sus nidos a colgar y otra vez sus alas a los cristales jugando llamarán pero aquellas que el vuelo refrenaban tu hermosura y mi dicha a contemplar aquellas que aprendieron nuestros nombres esas no volverán volverán las tupidas madreselvas de tu jardín las tapias a colgar y otra vez a la tarde aún más hermosas, sus flores se abrirán. Pero aquellas cuajadas de rocío, cuyas gotas mirábamos temblar y caer como lágrimas del día, esas no volverán. Volverán del amor a tus oídos las palabras ardientes a sonar, tu corazón de profundo sueño tal vez despertará. Pero mudo y absorto y de rodilla, como se adora a Dios ante su altar, como yo te he querido, desengáñate, así no te querrán. So this poem is a very romantic poem. It's a very beautiful poem, and it's a poem of longing. And so the swallows, of course, long for the warm weather and they go to San Juan Capistrano and that's where we're taking you today. And San Juan Capistrano is of course known for its mission. Uh, its mission, uh, San Juan Capistrano, was established in 1775 uh, and is the seventh of the 21 missions in California. And of course, we always want to acknowledge the indigenous people uh, from who, whom the land was stolen and um, the indigenous people uh, of the area, some say, because there is always uh, different groups, there was just not one group, there were lots and lots of different groups. One of them was uh, Achakamen, and they are from the Shoshone language group. So it's really interesting to see how the indigenous groups are connected in different parts um, of the Western United States. 
1833, Mexico passes a secularization act, which means that all church lands go back to, uh, are, are taken and distributed, mostly to political friends, but sometimes to uh, others. And so San Juan Capistrano, uh, although it is established in 1755, and of course very quickly the indigenous population decreases because of disease and brutality, um, then in 1833, the lands passed to actually the governor's uh, son-in-law, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I think his last name was Foster. Uh, and so uh, it's used by all sorts of groups. It's used by bandits, it's used as a stopover on the way to San Diego, it's used as all sorts of things. And eventually, um, when the United States invades and California becomes a state, then it is part of a historical uh, monument and preserved. And so it's, it is a beautiful structure and the church is quite beautiful inside. There's a lot of inlay work, uh, a lot of um, gold leaf, and here you can see some of the beautiful uh, areas of the church. When you go to San Juan Capistano, of course, you have to go to the famous adobe. And this adobe uh, belonged to uh, a gentleman, and here are some of the photographs, and here, here are some of the pictures that we took when we had lunch there. It was, uh, the, the food was good, and the place has been there for, I don't know, 100 years, 150 years, so it's a pretty historic place to stop by and have lunch when you're on your way to visit the uh, mission, or on the way back, or if you're just passing by. <laughs> So now for my favorite part of the video, the book recommendations. And I thought I would include um, three very different books. Well, I'm going to include uh, the poetry of Gustavo Adolfo Becker because everyone should read him. And of course your local library or your local bookseller is the best place to, uh, the, you, the local, your local library is the best place to borrow the book or your local bookseller is the best place to purchase the book. In the description box below, as always, I'm going to leave links where you can purchase used or new books from sites like Better World Books that use your purchase to leverage donations to literacy uh, needs in other communities because we want to help each other always. <laughs> so the first book, of course, as I mentioned, is going to be Gustav, uh, Gustavo Adolfo Becker's um, poems. And the second is a kid's book. It's a really nice children's book about telling the story of the swallows that come to San Juan Capistrano uh, in March and return to Argentina in October. I also feel like it's a beautiful description and maybe metaphor for unity between northern, uh, the northern part of the hemisphere and the southern part of the hemisphere. We're one continent and we're all part of nature. And just as the swallows know that their home is in California and in Goya, Argentina, you know, we should feel the same way. We are all one people. <laughs> so the third book, because there's a lot of talk right now about the British Empire and reparations and all of that, uh, is called The Last Queen. And so if you want to get just a just a small insight into what it meant to be colonized by England, this is a great book. And it's also a good book because it talks about the role of women uh, during the uh, colonization of, it, it's called India today, but in the past it was different states. And so the state that this story takes place in is the Punjab and a very beautiful, very rich state. And the detail of this story of this woman, uh, I won't give the story away, but basically she is a dog trainer's daughter. In other words, her father was dog trainer um, to the Maharaja and uh, he ends up falling in love with her. And so it's an interesting uh, story about court life and also the historical context when you're talking about colonization. Uh, under the British Empire. And I think I'm going to do a whole video on um, the British Empire colonization and maybe specifically the Caribbean. Let me know what you think. <laughs> I would love to uh, hear what you'd like us to talk to you about. So as always, we thank you for coming to the end of the video. Please like, share, comment, let us know what you're thinking and, and what you opine. So as always, we wish you mucho cariño, mucho salud, y mucho amor. Gracias.